Hello. In this video, we will be talking about forecasting, including a trend. Uh, you may use this if you're using, say, double exponential smoothing uh, or any other method in which you estimate a new level each period, and then you estimate the trend and then need to project that further into the future. And the notation we'll be using, we will say that the forecast, including the trend for any particular period t, is equal to the new estimate of the level, which we have just created, which is called f, with a subscript of t. And then the current most recent estimate of the trend is represented by t, capital T, with a subscript of a lower t. So then to make a forecast for the next period, for period t, we add those two numbers together. Pretty straightforward. So let's suppose that it is uh, period nine has just happened and we are going to make a forecast for period 10. We have updated the level F and coming up with a value of 544. And then we have updated the trend and come up with an estimate of 20.4. If you would like to see how those are calculated using double exponential smoothing. I have a video that I will link to down below. So we are now ready to make our forecast, including the trend for the next period, period 10. So we will just add those two together. And we will get 564.4. Okay, well, that was pretty easy. Now suppose your boss comes along and says, well, what's gonna happen in period 11? One option would be to tell your boss, not so fast, I have this whole process, I have to update F, I have to update T, and then I'm gonna put those together and then I'll give you your estimate for period 11, uh, Mr. or Ms. Boss, but come on, just wait. Obviously that's not the acceptable answer. So what we wanna do is rather than make up something else, our best estimate of the current level is right here. Our best estimate of the trend is right here. And we've used those two to make a forecast for period 10. If you wanna make a forecast for period 11, let's stick with our same estimate and just add on one more period's worth of growth. So to make a forecast for period 11, the easiest way to think about this is just take the answer that we just came up with, the forecast in period 10, and add on one more period's worth of the trend. So in this case, this gives us 564.4 plus another 20.4 for a final answer of 584.8. There may be times where you want to look farther into the future and you're only looking at a couple periods ahead. And so following this approach of adding on one period and adding on another period might not be that bad. But there might be times when you want to look far enough into the future that having to go through this just seems cumbersome, irritating, annoying. So how could you look farther into the future? Well, let's talk about that. So the forecast, including the trend, right now it's period T. And we're making a forecast for next period, which is period T. And what if we want to go farther? And so I will write it as a formula and then we'll, we'll try an example. So let's say we want to go n periods further into the future. We will do that by taking the level and adding on not one times T, but n plus one times t. So as an example, I'm just going to calculate period 11 this way just to prove to you that we get the same answer and then I'll try going further into the future. So uh, right now um, t was equal to n. Sorry, t is equal to n. Right now t is equal to 10 in our little example. So if we wanted to make a forecast for period 11, if t is 10 and we're talking about 11, um, what we've got going on here then is n equals one. We're looking one additional period into the future. So we'll have the level from period 10 plus one plus one 
times t. So we get 544 is our current level. And then we have 2 times 20.4. And um, so we have 544 plus 2 times 20.4 is 40.8. So we get 584.8. And we can verify that that's the same answer that I got a few minutes ago when I was talking about period 11. Let's say we want to go farther into the future. So let's say we want to know the forecast for period 15. So if we're talking about period 15, remember T is 10. So we're going to have the level in 10 plus, uh, let me just draw a little line here to try to separate these two. So if we're talking about, we're talking about going five periods further into the future. So that means now n equals five. Okay. So we're going to take We're going to add six periods worth of the trend, six periods worth of growth uh, onto the level to get our answer. Okay, so we have our level is 544 plus six times 20.4. So 544 stays the same. And then six times 20 is 122. Point four, so we end up with six sixty six point four. So just to recap here, we started out by with the a trend adjusted forecast. We had a level which we called F. We had a trend which we called T. We make a forecast for the next period. We just add those two together, and we got an answer of five forty four. If we wanted to go one period beyond that, we could add on one more period's worth of trend. So we just take, we took the answer that we'd gotten for next period and added on one more period's worth of growth. We could keep doing that again and again, and again, to go as far into the future as we need to, but that doesn't sound like very much fun. So we have this formula here. If we want to go additional periods into the future, we just have to decide how many periods into the future we want to go. And then we just add on that many more periods worth of growth uh, to get that far into the future. So if we're going n periods into the future, we take the intercept plus n times one um, multiples of the current trend or growth. I hope this has been helpful.